Don't attack my bird. Don't know how they were able to communicate their idea of a prison break through that stone wall. But I guess it must be thinner than expected because it's odd how they were able to get that done. Hey! You know, my enemy is also my enemy, but it doesn't exclude them from attacking each other. My favorite. Hopefully both of those issues will solve themselves. Doing themselves a binge party while our animals are starving. I understand. I get that you're hungry and all. But I still feel like it might be more worth it to, you know, solve the issues immediately plaguing our colony. Rather than just having some fun yourself. Who am I to judge? I enjoy food just as much as the next person. Probably less than a starving person, but hey. What's going on with this turkey? Oh, it just downed a stupid amount of alcohol. Okay. Sure, that makes sense. When in Rome, or when trapped in the storage room, do as the drunkards do. There we go. Oh, your right leg is destroyed. Well, luckily for you, we don't have any... We, can, we, can, we can't perform surgery. Why you felt the need to rip off your leg, I do not know. But with you going berserk, I don't blame him. Guess you broke his toe off. So, turn about is fair play? Uh, it's rather unfortunate. I was quite enjoying my pre-stream time reading my manga. There's a, apparently a big update on the various sites I've been reading on. There's a bunch of stuff to work through. But I was uh, interrupted by, you know, responsibilities, having to do my job and all that. Just annoying stuff. Just let me spend time doing my hobbies without needing these things called money and responsibilities. Blech. Yes, a little fatigue. Ended up falling asleep late. Took a nap way too late last night, but it was oh, just perfect. I knew it was going to interrupt my sleep schedule when I woke up and decided to go back to sleep. But, you know, it was something that sometimes you're just so comfortable you know you'll suffer later. Through the consequences right now is what matters. Just right now. Just remember, when you're going into a ability draft, yes, it's fun to always be the carry. However, if you can take your satisfaction from the hard CC you can do, trapping people, making sure they can't function in the game properly, and actually playing as a support, there's only so much gold to go around, and sometimes it's okay to take a back seat to further the goals of your team. It's a team game, after all. Five people working together for a common goal. Uh, do what you can for that goal, even if it means not getting all the last hits. That thing about being uh, not good at this game and then being the carry and being hyper-focused, there's a lot of beings there. Didn't spend a lot of time looking at this whole death screen. Which, as it turns out, not the most enjoyable. Really wish there were something I could do about that. Getting good, obviously, but I struggle with that. <laughs> When there was an item that got rid of all their CC that you could press a button and walk away. One that I normally don't buy because I am much too greedy for that. But specifically on this hero, and I guess on against their team, it is a good one. Oh. I got greedy. Goodness gracious. What was that tracking on those missiles? They followed him to the end of the earth. So, you should definitely keep in mind when drafting abilities, it's much more important to draft the CC and the synergistic abilities necessarily than ones that just do damage. Raw damage without anything else usually is not what gets you the win in ability draft. Because as it turns out, having a carry right click for two or three seconds while the enemy can't do anything is more influential than being able to pump out five or six hundred damage in a single click. Is that is those two are about the same, but the carry is able to continue doing that, whereas the single ability goes on cooldown. Very little building damage dealt by them. Five hundred. Surprisingly enough, even though they dealt five hundred ninety nine, we did lose two towers just because of minion damage. 
You gotta always be careful about those minions. They they creep up on you. Get it? Because they're called creeps sometimes. Good joke. Unintentional, but still funny. 23 gold K gold lead. If it was just 23 gold lead, that'd be very different. As it turns out, 23 gold lead is not a whole lot. But when you add a K behind it, that signifies a very different sort of game. Let's see here. Well, we continue looking through sets. Invoker is an immortal set. Oh, fancy. He's got long white hair. And he's wearing he's going through his edgy emo phase, is why this costs two hundred dollars apparently. People are very much interested. Oh, or he's going Super Saiyan. Ah. Cool. Definitely worth two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, most of these are pretty cool looking. It, admittedly, most of them glow in some special way, and everybody knows if you glow. You're inherently at least like 30% cooler, if not more. So keep that in mind when you're doing designs. But you also have to have a non-glowing version to compare it to. You can't just have everybody glow, then no one's special. But if one person glows and a bunch of other people don't, oh man, that's the cool guy. I really think they should do something more with their armor and some of these sets. I don't need to see... I, I want to see you from the... I don't need to see your animations. I just want to see you standing there. If I wanted to spin the model, I would do that myself. There you go. Idle animation. Perfect. I should actually admire the armor. Instead of just the backside. Just saying, though, if I was in a fantasy world, I, would, I too would like to have pets. Mythological pet animals. To ride around on a, a giant lion, that would be awesome. Of course, to have it tamed and under your control would be even more awesome. Hopefully the two are not mutually exclusive. But who's to say? We will, uh... If I ever get isekai or whatnot, I'll, I'll try and let you know. Thanks for watching. You should watch another. Please?